Hi, everyone. I'm Eric Bowling. Welcome to Cashing In, our Cashing In crew in just a moment. But first, to Senator Rand Paul. Senator, you're a huge proponent of privacy rights. Other lawmakers are calling to add more security cameras. Where do you stand on the issue, sir? Well, you know, if the government's going to use cameras to watch us, they, they need to have probable cause. They need to have uh, an argument to use the Constitution to, to do surveillance on us. And then I'm okay with it. But willy-nilly on everybody all the time in open spaces, I'm against that. One thing that's lost in this debate, though, is almost all the cameras that were used to catch these uh, young men in Boston were private cameras. And I'm not opposed to private companies using surveillance cameras to protect their property. Senator, we, we were in Times Square. And we talked to a bunch of people, and, and with, to the T, to the, the very last person, everyone said, I want more cameras. I want it, uh, especially in areas that are prone uh, to, to, to attacks. They want more. Why shouldn't we have more? You know, I think in the aftermath of a terrible tragedy where all of us wanted to get these young men who committed this atrocity and we want to see them tried and convicted, I think there's a lot of emotion and anger towards this. Right after 9-11, if you interviewed people, 70-some-odd percent of people said they would trade their freedom, all of their freedom, for security. That number's now more back to 50-50, which is about where it always is. But I think it's important to know it's a slippery slope, and someday you may have cameras everywhere. Think of 1984, where the cameras were in your bedroom and in your uh, dining room, everywhere. You never want a moment's notice without being watched. There is a downside to that, and we have to be careful not to slide in that direction. You're right, Senator. I'm, I'm in the camp that says more cameras. If I'm not doing something wrong, mm -hmm. then, I, then go ahead, film me. Um, no problem. Um, am, where is it unconstitutional, or is it unconstitutional to have more cameras? Well, you have to have probable cause for the government to be involved in surveillance. We had a big Supreme Court case last year on whether or not you can put a GPS tag on someone's car without a warrant. It's not that the government can't do it. They just have to ask for a warrant and say, this guy we think is committing this crime and is involved in this, and this is our evidence so far. We want to follow him with a GPS. But imagine the world we would live in if you had politicians who didn't like their opponents and they put GPS tags on their opponents. You've seen the acrimony in Washington. Would you want one side, Republicans or Democrats, to have the ability to do surveillance on their enemies or people they don't like their speech? It's a terrible precedent. We need to be very, very careful with allowing expansion of cameras. Well, again, the difference here being that you're targeting one or two a person. You're putting a, a, a tracking device on a person. My right. point was a, a general area, a camera that, that takes a picture of a, a general area. Wouldn't that be a crime deterrent? Well, we have a lot of that, and a lot of that, so that's my point is there's a different standard for government and private businesses because government has enormous power and it can be abused. A private business like Macy's or Gimbel's or whatever can have cameras around their building to protect their property. And I think if you looked back at how much footage came from government and how much footage came from private cameras, I think you'd find that the vast majority of the images that were used to hunt these two boys was actually private cameras and private images. All right.